So I know recently I've been talking about AWX and the issues that I have with it. Now, the one thing I don't want people to think is I don't like Ansible. I love Ansible. And today I want to show you a modern user interface, an open source interface that is, that you can use to still manage your Ansible playbooks. It's a really clean interface and it's really, really simple to use. So let's go and have a look at Ansible Semaphore. So here is the documentation for Semaphore. Uh, Semaphore is a very, very, by the looks of it, simple application written in Go, which means we can compile it on pretty much anything. Let's go across to the installation. There's various ways to install Semaphore. We can do a snap package. We can just do a normal package manager, whether that's a deb file or an RPM, a Docker, or just a binary file. I'm going to go with a package manager as I've got a CentOS box ready to go. And here are the commands that you can do. We can copy and paste this, or if we just take this URL, instead of doing a wget and then doing a yum install, we could just do that all in one command. So let's have a look at that. So let's log into the server first. And we can do a yum local install and actually feed it a URL. So let's try and do this in one command. And at the time of writing, we're at V2875, but obviously depending on when you watch this video, you might want to just go and check that documentation and see if there's a later version. And it's going to go and install by the looks of it a lot of Perl modules. Um, Git, which isn't installed. Um, and that's all fine. And then what we need to install after this as well is Ansible, as it's not been installed yet. So that's now installed. And then we can run this semaphore setup. So now we need to configure a database for it. I'm just going to use my SQL. Uh, and actually, if we look here and put the default credentials in, this isn't going to work. Uh, yep, that's fine. Don't want email alerts or telegram alerts or slack alerts. We don't want to help the output. We can put it into root and we're going to get a fail. And the reason we're getting a fail is we haven't actually set up MySQL. So let's go ahead and do that now. So yum install MySQL server. It should give us version eight. If you wanted to go and use something like MariaDB, you can obviously configure that. Um, it's just a MySQL alternative, so that should be fine. Or if you wanted to use Postgres, go ahead and install Postgres and set that up. So we just need a MySQL server. I'm assuming that many of the things that you do uh, within the uh, web UI, you store in MySQL. So that seems to be uh, installed. Let's go ahead and just confirm that after... starting MySQL. Now, obviously you're going to want to, you know, configure my SQL to be a little bit more secure. If we did my SQL secure installation, um, we can go through, uh, say yes, we want a, I'm just going to go with a low password for now. Um, this is just a dev environment. You may want, um, something a little bit stronger. I'm going to remove anonymous users, disallow root login remotely, remove test databases, relay the privilege table, and we're done. So if I now try MySQL, I get it denied. If I now do that and put in the password, I should be able to get in, and I do. So now we can run that semaphore setup, which is semaphore setup again, and we've got MySQL. Uh, yep, likewise, it's fine. Root, let's put in the password. And that's fine. 
Uh, the playbook path temp semaphore. Yep. Okay. Disable all of the alerts and authentication. I'm sure we can set them up in the web UI later. And there we go. So that's now actually executing the migration. We have to put in a username, admin, an email, Toby DevOps Diary.io. My name, Toby. Password. Now, one thing they could do better is actually make this password uh, hidden. I'm going to have to blur it on this screen, um, but really, you know, it's a password field. It shouldn't be displayed out on the console. And there we go. So we're all ready. Um, if we have a look at this configuration file, we can see here there is a config file. Um, it's Here we can see we've got host, username, password. We're not using Bolt or Postgres. We've got loads of different values in here and not a lot else. It's very, very simple. Um, so let's go back to the documentation. So we've run the setup and it says now you can run this. So let's go ahead and do that. And the server is now running. So 1020 on 3000. So let's go. And here it is. So let's go with admin. And we have this. So let's call it DevOps Diary. We'll have some alerts. And it has been created. So uh, first thing we might want to do is look through the task template. So we can create a template. And we can call it uh, build a web server playbook file name might be web server.yaml. We don't have any inventory, so I don't think it's actually going to let me create this just yet. No, it needs all of this and it hasn't got any data. So we need to go through and actually set these up first. Um, it's quite frustrating that on the drop down, I don't have an option to just create here. Um, so let's go and have a look. So we've got an inventory. Let's go and create an inventory um, test. I uh, bet you it's going to want some user credentials. Yep. Um, so it's required. So let's go to user credentials, which will be in the key store. And in here will be a login with a password. Again, passwords in clear text. Key name, root password. And Let's go back to the inventory. Let's do a new inventory, call it test the credentials. Now we've got root password and the type is a static. And then we can enter our inventory. So um, let me just go and grab a server that we could use for this demonstration. So what this is essentially doing is creating an inventory file. So we can see here the example here. This is what you would usually see when you're actually creating um, an inventory file. So uh, let's put in web server and let's put in an IP address. So let's do 20, uh, sorry, 10.20.0.79 and hit create. So we've got our test inventory here and then we need to look at our, our environment. So an environment, we're just going to have uh, dev and this is where we can put in some variables that will be passed or some environment variables we don't need any of that um, it looks like we do need some extra variables but um, this is frustrating because i don't actually want an environment um, but annoyingly if i go to the task template and create one environment is a required field so let's go back to environment let's do dev um, and let's do copy this and hit save. I'm not going to use these variables, so it's frustrating that I even need to declare it, but we are where we are. We so we've got a key store, we've got an environment, we've got an inventory. And this for anyone that's used AWX, it's very similar. We're kind of going from the, the bottom up. Um, we don't have a repository. Let's go and get a repository. I just need to uh, connect to GitHub. So let's put in a repository here, and this is called uh, Ansible. Oh. Principle 101, 
This is the repository. There is no branch. We don't need an access key. And it says key is required. Um, the key shouldn't be, and the branch is required. I mean, it should just be able to do the default branch. Um, so we have got master and it's a public repo, so I shouldn't need a key. Um, so none, if you use HTTPS, well, we are using HTTPS. Um, and I bet I can't set that to none now. No. So let's try that again. Should better hit create and saying access key is required. Well, it shouldn't be credentials. It should be uh, none if you're using HTTPS or file. Well, I can't pick none. So I'm going to have to pick that and hit create. Um, and then let's go to templates. The playbook file name is actually webserver.yaml. The inventory is my test inventory. The repository is there. The environment's dev. I don't have a vault password because I don't need one. Um, and I can hit create and this is it. Now, if I hit run, I fully expect this not to work, um, because it's going to try and let's have a look here. Oh, of course it's trying to connect via SSH. Um, now here's an interesting thing that I didn't install Ansible on my machine. So it's gone ahead and installed Ansible. I was trying to connect to a server that I have not set up an SSH key for. Um, and it's trying to use the username and password, but there's no SSH pass. So let me go ahead and just create that. And let's grab a IP address, 71. And that's now there. So let's try and run that again. Okay, so this is now down to my playbook. So my playbook. Um, requires a server name variable um, to duplicate to be in the inventory file. So if we go across to the inventory, um, we should be able to do here and type in server name equals web one dot uh, devops diary dot io. Hit save, and that should now work. And here we go. That playbook is now running. It's set the host name, which is why we need that host name. Um, and it's also used in the Nginx config. And we can see that's going through now. It's installing packages. So this seems to be working. Now, it's a bit frustrating that I had to give it, for example, um, a GitHub uh, username, even though it was a public repository. I just gave it one that it wouldn't actually be able to authenticate with, but you know, I still did. Um, the environment again, hmm. I had to put some things in there that I just didn't need. Um, but apart from that, the interface does actually look quite good. So there's obviously a couple of things that could be better. Um, but once this completes, we'll then actually be able to see the task, um, and be able to see the history of this job. And there we go. That was successful. We can see here uh, what's happened. It's got a nice interface. I can remove that. And we can see it by just dropping down here. Um, again, this arrow, if I'm to be picky, that should be an arrow to the right usually. And then you highlight it and then you get everything below. Um, but it's kind of doing down and up, which kind of works. But most interfaces do a, a right angle. And that's that. So if I wanted to rerun it, I could rerun it again. 
Um, but from the looks of it, everything seems to work. So I could build on environments. You know, I can see this was a dev environment. You could make um, different uh, variables inside the different environments. We can see here we've got dev. Um, if I had different variables that we then used in a playbook, um, that could be set here. Um, so on the face of it, quite a nice uh, interface. But obviously there's a, a couple of tweaks that could be made, but hey, let's be honest, it's a free open source product. So, you know, we can't complain. And then lastly, we've got team where we can go and create new team members uh, and have different logons for different people. And it also supports LDAP. So we could connect it up to uh, Active Directory or something like that. And then last but not least, there's dark mode. So for those that like dark mode, we can go through and enable dark mode. Um, the dashboard shows us all the tasks. And if we go into the templates, obviously it'll break it down per template. And there we have it. There was a good look at Ansible Semaphore. Let me know what you think, whether it's an interface that you feel would benefit your environments and you know the benefits that it may have over things like AWX. And thanks again for watching the video. Please like and subscribe if you find this content useful. Thank you.